G'day everybody. Today we're going to open up Bitwig Studio for the first time. So this is Ableton user opens Bitwig Studio for the first time. So let's go ahead and select that bad boy and instead of clicking on it, let's press enter. So we got this flash splash screen that shows up and here we can either commit to the Bitwig bandwagon and buy an account and log in or we can just dip our feet in the water and use a demo mode so that's what we'll do okay we open up to this window here and this window is showing us um, we can open up a template so we can open up a template that lets us just start playing keyboards synths drums or, or a performance set and then they've got demo projects, so we could see how somebody else has made something inside of um, inside of Bitwig. And shout out to Headflux if you guys listen to Psytrance. Headflux has made a um, a demo inside of Bitwig. So what we could do is we could go new project, and here we are confronted with a new project. Um, and we've got file up here for opening new projects, um, saving exporting etc etc settings let's go into settings so i'm using a single large display yep um we got our metering mode so we can set what metering we want we got our playhead we got mouse settings behavior settings audio settings i just checked that i've got that set up right yep that's right recording etc etc everything's in here so plugins we can locate our plugins um, how do we, um, wonder whether we could set up a folder, um, that it would look inside locations, plug-in locations. Okay. So let's add a location, this computer, uh, local disk, VST installs. Okay. That's cool. Uh, can it find it? Yep. So we can see Serums there now and a bunch of others. Replica. Um, I haven't installed Silent yet. I should install Silent. Um, but this is a new computer, so I don't have all of my plugins. So anyway, that's enough of that. Um, we've got a, a play menu here that lets us set quantization. Um, what happens post recording? Record quantization bunch of other stuff um just by the way um bitwig is possible to use with a touch screen interface so if you have a microsoft surface um or uh, i don't know whether it's compatible with ipads but maybe um we got play stop record and automate right automation right that is something that i do not know dsp performance graph okay so digital signal processing performance graphs graph Okay, um, and this is something that I don't know. We've got our tempo here, so let's go 145, 148. We got our um, musical timing signature, so at the moment it's 44. We'll keep it at that. This is indicating where we are on the timeline. This is restore automation. Okay, if we break our automation, that's metronome, that's loop, that's the punch in for the loop features. We've got add for adding instrument track, audio effect rack, or group. We can add a scene, don't know what that is. Um, and then we can edit for duplicate, undo, et cetera, et cetera. If I press tab, yep, so tab is just like in Ableton. It shows us the session view versus the arrangement view. And you might be wondering how I know all of this so quickly after opening up Bitwig. That's because this is really, really similar to Ableton. So here we've got our send channels. They call them effect channels. That's cool, or effect tracks. We've got our master. Um, we've got an instrument channel, which would be a MIDI channel in Ableton and an audio channel, which is an audio channel in Ableton. Um, we've got our browser over here, so I can come to this. I can go to my computer. I could go into, um, users, documents, resources, samples, samples. Okay. Let's grab a kick. Let's audition. Just going to turn that down so it doesn't bleed into the microphone. That kicks pretty nice. Let's drop it in there. Okay, so what can we do? If I press Z, what if I press plus? Okay, so plus, 
plus zooms us in, but it zooms us in maybe where our cursor is. No? How do we zoom in? Does that just zoom in on whatever's in the middle of the screen? Okay, yeah. Well, that's not too great. Um, I can grab this, make that bigger. Okay, cool. Waveform looks nice. Let's go to the start. Let's put that there. Let's see what we can do inside of here. So I've got the ability to shorten the clip like so. What about fade? I can fade the clip by grabbing there. What else can I do? Um, I can pull that shorter there. Can I put a fade on the front of it? Yes, I can. So that's how I can do my audio fades. What if I pull them together? Can I do anything else other than that? Can I right click on it? Um, so I can do transpose, save to library, slice into drum machine. Okay, cool. Bounce in place. Okay, scale. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Consolidate. Yep. Double content, loop, region, cut, copy, paste, delete, uh, change color. Cool. Pretty sweet. Um, let's zoom back out. So I'll press minus. Okay, minus. That works a bit better. Um, let's loop a um, section like that. Okay, kick drum's going strong. Maybe we'll roll that like there. Let's um, delete that. Uh, let's let's make an instrument track. Let's grab a copy of Serum. So we've done an audio. Let's do a um, MIDI. So I'll put that away. We'll press plus here. Um, if I type Serum in, yeah, there it is. Double click it. Boom, it drops it in. Nice and easy. Double click. We can put a MIDI clip in. I'll make that MIDI clip that long. I'll click it and consolidate it. Not, I don't know whether that's necessary. What if I click this audio sample? And cons uh, go Control J, yeah, consolidate. Control J, J yeah, consolidate. If I look closer at that, yeah, it looks like it probably did save the volume fade. Maybe, maybe not. Can't be too sure about that. Maybe I'll just go back here and put that volume roll on it again. All right, so we've got this guy. Um, this isn't really part of this bitwig thing, but I'm just going to quickly make it. Um, baseline. So um, I'm just going to do an offbeat bass and um, we'll do a note like that. Shift down arrow key, same as Ableton. Shift it down arrow key. Um, that key's in G, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're in G. Um, how do I get that back? Here, double click. There it is. Uh, how do I open it? Click that. Boom. Um, all right. So envelope. Let's put 10 MMS of attack. 10 MMS of attack. Let's put the sustain to 50. The decay. Let's say 250. Um, and we'll assign that to a filter. Pull the reso down. No resonance. Cool, and maybe no, I quite like it, Brian. Okay, that's our base. Whatever. Click both of them. Go, yeah, Control G or Group, Control R or Rename, Kick Base. That's nice and easy. Kick um, base uh, caps. And we can color it. So purple and that purple and that purple. Great. Okay. Um, what else do we want to do? Let's see what, what effects we can drop on here. So let's go effects. Um, dynamics would be a compressor. Um what if we want something like um, distortion? Ooh. So the mix control. Cool, we can apply a real small amount of distortion. Whatever, uh, I just want to use effects. I don't care whether they sound good or not. I just want to see how they go. So amp. That could be an effect that we used. Um, so if I Grab that, Control D will duplicate, so duplicate that three times. Um, 
grab all of that, duplicate again, duplicate, duplicate, okay. Um, how do we quickly zoom out? Boom, like that. Um, and then how do we automate? Okay, so um, automation right. Uh, click the mix, uh, add an automation lane. Okay, so where is the automation lane? That is the question. Um, if I can't figure this out quickly, I don't want to dwell on it. Um, I really don't know where the automation is. Um, that may be something I'm going to need to come back to. I wanted to automate that to be uh, all the way on and then slowly uh, come down basically uh, so that I could introduce the kick and bass. Um, so stop, play, kind of like this. Like that, but we aren't going to be able to do it. Um, could have been full screen this whole time. That would have been nice. Could have been full screen this whole time. That would have been nice. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, are we doing anything interesting? What else could we do? Let's just quickly chuck in. Um, we have drums here, so I could chuck in some drums. Dynamics, effects, they're my effects. Okay, EQs, resonators, clocks for... Um, I believe that you can clock to external things such as modular rigs. Um, not sure whether... Yeah, I think the CV stuff is um, is controlling that sort of thing, which is very cool. Uh, that's very cool for modular people. Um, what else can we look at really quickly? Um uh, tab goes over to the mix, I mean the session view. Okay, um, this is showing us distortion. Can I change them out? I can turn it on and off. Okay, I can also move the sequence. Yep, that's pretty cool. Um, that's my sends. Okay, that's how you control that. Obviously volume faders, right click, default. Right click, default. Okay, so it sums the... Oh, that's really cool. So it puts things inside a group at negative 10 decibels. Uh, what if I add a new instrument rack? That's it, already at negative 10. Okay, so it kind of gain stages stuff for you. That's nice. That's a really cool feature. Um, group effect. Yeah, okay, we'll track that. Show in and out uh, ins. Computer. Yeah, okay. Okay, we can set our ins and outs there. Um, show clip launcher. Okay, uh, you can show that in there. That's cool. Um, stop. Have I have I stuffed something up? Why is that not available in here now? Um, I'm not sure what I've done wrong to lose that. Okay, and on that note, I think I'll end that video because I don't know how to get the audio back. But Bitwig is a really cool door. Um, I can use it quickly because I know Ableton, but I think that this is going to be one to watch for in the future. It's going to be really cool. Um, I am going to learn it inside and out, and then I'm going to teach it to you. Stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in another one very shortly.